Before we begin the sermon, I want you to take the gospel text and have it in front of you for the whole sermon. A reading from our gospel text. Getting out or getting onto one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and he taught the people from the boat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oftentimes when we look at texts, particularly texts that we have seen over and over and over, we think we have them figured out just to find out that we really haven't even scratched the surface of them. This is one of those. Who doesn't know the calling of the disciples? Who doesn't know the gathering of great fish. I mean, it's one of Christ's greatest miracles, right? But then I wonder, how much did, did Christ really care about the fish? Because really, all that was, was to point Him as the Messiah, right? It was an epiphany. That's all, that was the whole point. It was so that people around could see that He was Christ, the Christ. The one who had come to save the world, humanity. And so, on occasion, a crowd was pressing in on Jesus because they wanted to hear a word from God. And he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. I'm going to point out here a hinge, what I call a hinge, some might call it a hook. But I prefer hinge because this is the point in which the entire text relies on. Because remember, it's not about the fish. It's not about the fish. And I can prove it with the 11th verse. And when he had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. There's a bunch of dead fish on the ground. And they were with them, they left with joy to follow Christ. So it's not about the fish. It's not about what Jesus can do. And that's how we need to read Scripture. It's not about what Jesus can do. It's about what Christ does do. We all know that Christ can bring in fish into a boat. Having, you know, created water and fish and boats and all of that. Of course he can. It's not, it's, it, it's, it's not crazy to think that, that Christ can do this. But what is interesting is what Christ does before the catching of the fish. And what he does before the catching of the fish is exactly what he does to us. And we don't even know it. What he did to Simon, Peter, and James, and John, he does to us. And we don't even recognize it. Those waters are baptismal waters. That's why when people say, or when people ask, oh, you baptized babies, so what, they're, not able to, they're not able to think. They're not able to cognitively understand uh, what the faith is. My question is, do you? Does anybody? No, we have to be passively brought into the faith. Christ passively brings us into the faith and aggressively at that. Not passive aggressive, but passive and aggressive. And so what happens to them happens to us too, through the waters of holy baptism. I will give you an example. When I was in uh, middle elementary school, or middle school, I had, I think I've told you this before, I had a kid hold my face into the dirt, uh, screaming, uh, that he would not let me up until I accepted Jesus. And I said, 
we're going to be here a long time. Because, and, that, and it was, I, didn't, I didn't have the theological foreknowledge. I just wasn't giving him what he wanted. That was, that was just my stubbornness more than anything else. But later on, when asked, not by that guy, uh, how I believe or how I know that I believe, I didn't have an answer. And I've, talk, I've preached on this before. I didn't have an answer. I don't know how I came to believe. I just believe, I've always believed. Well, why? I don't, I don't know. Well, then how can you be saved? Because I believe. But how can you believe? Because I'm saved. I don't know what, you're, what you want from me. And then I discovered baptism. And I was like, oh, okay. So I was an infant. And my parents had me baptized. And now I believe. I'm saved by the water and the word. And now I believe. Okay. It makes sense now why I've always believed. There hasn't been a time that I didn't believe, except for the period of <coughs> gestation to font, when I was a little heathen. But even then, I mean, of course, I didn't know what was going on. I was an infant. Well, here's the hinge to the text and why I want you to take a look and make sure you have it. He said to Simon, put out, no, excuse me, getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little, a, a little from the land. So what does that mean? What does that mean? It means that the boat was surrounded by water. That means not only are you surrounded by water, there's no escaping. There is no escaping. And if Jesus is, if Jesus is in that boat with you, there's no escaping Jesus. And so all of a sudden, when he says, do this thing, and this marvelous thing happens, then all of a sudden, Simon Peter's like, what does he say? Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Ah, but Christ has him right where he wants him, in a boat where he can't escape Jesus. And that's where we are. We're in the ark of the church. And we can't escape Jesus either. Recognize your sin. Confess your sin. Be forgiven. But understand this. You're stuck in the Christian faith. Get used to it. Furthermore, act like it. Be proud in that boat. And we do. We come before every Sunday and say, Depart from me, for I am an unclean man. And what does Christ say? In the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you of all of your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, get back in the boat. Do not be afraid. Dear Christians, we are catchers of men. The calling of the first disciples is not the beginning of the church, but it was the beginning of the witnesses, the ones who would see the Messiah, the miracles that he would do. And I want you to imagine, just for a second, If you had to leave your job to follow Jesus, would you do it? And that's what they did. They left a lot of dead fish and a lot of scaly revenue to follow Jesus. I could make a statement here about SMP, but I'm just going to leave it.
Here's the reality that we have. We are in the boat with Christ and he calls it the ark where we have drowned where we have been drowned and where the evil have been drowned and yet we have been raised up and placed in the ark and Christ says to us be not afraid for you are the fisher of men you will catch men you will preach to men and so I ask you this and I know that we're in the middle of pandemic murder hornets and who knows whatever else. Are you bringing people to church? Or are we washing our nets? I think we need to be bringing people and there's not a one of us in here who couldn't do a better job at that, including myself. Bringing people to hear the word of the Lord. You see, we're all in this boat together. This boat's name is Augustana Lutheran Church. And you want to know something? Jesus Christ is a member. Christ is a member of our congregation who can't be voted out. It actually says that in our Constitution. Christ is a member. He comes each and every Sunday to give to you the forgiveness of sins. To remind you that you're in His boat. And He will wash you and He will feed you and He will forgive you and He will send you out to bring others in. And we'll do it over and over and over. Depart from me, O Lord, for I am a sinful man. And the Lord says, no, you are a sinful man. That is why I'm here. And that makes all the difference in the world. I know that you're a sinful man. My blood will be shed for you. I know you're a sinful man. My side shall be pierced for you. I know you're a sinful man. I will be put on the cross. I know you are a sinful man. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Christ says to you, I'll not depart you. I will never depart you, because I have sealed you with baptismal waters. You are mine, and mine alone. Believe, teach, and confess the true Christian faith. And people, when they hear, they'll be just as clueless as I was. They will come in to hear. And you know what happens? I don't do anything. You don't do anything. Our great member, Jesus Christ does everything. He will passively give the faith to those whom He will. But folks, we, got, we have got to fill the church. We have to. Not for the sake of our nation. Nothing like that but for the sake that more people will have the forgiveness of sins. We need, instead of fish, we need more people. So many people, our boat begins to sink. And to where we say, ah, 
Now I see how Noah had it. This is the ark. This is the church. That's why it's called a nave. As in navy. The ark. That is meant to be the bottom of the boat. And so when I say you're in the boat, I literally mean you are in the belly of the boat. And you've been placed here by holy baptism. And so let us come. Let us not tarry any longer. Let's end this sermon because let's commune and eat the body and drink the blood of Jesus Christ. And in so be united together as one faith, one Lord, and in one baptism. Amen. Now may the peace that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. 